Ben can go into the more details about the actual deposition. But the fact that we've got a three-year-old child that obviously wa died and was cremated and was buried, this is something that is just giving us some insight into the behavior of these folks. To find uh, a discovery of this, of this nature you know, was you know, certainly nothing that we expected. This is the very first house. This is the very first <coughs> burial. This is the very first residential behavioral suite. So it, it's, um, there's no comparison. This was um, not the primary focus of our work at the site. The primary focus at the beginning and how we got the funding was to focus on a very early component. So one of the earliest in Alaska, um, over 13,000 years uh, uh, old. So the very last day, um, we uncovered the top of this, so it looked like a hearth. It looked like a pit hearth, and that's what we're interpreting uh, the function to have been. Well, the child was laid down in the pit. Uh, the, the child was, a three-year-old would be about like three feet high, something of that nature. The pit was considerably smaller. So just based on that, the child would have, was laying toward the edge of the pit, and the knees would have had to been drawn up. Uh, so they would kind of be like a, a flexed burial, but the child would have been laying on his or her back because you can tell by the coloration. So the back of the cranium was dark in color, black, which means it didn't get to as hot of a temperature as the rest. So it was either because it was laying directly on the ground surface or it was because it was just the coolest part of the fire. And then as you move up, you can actually see the change in color on the skull. So you've got black in the back and then brownish to grayish and then in the front to white and then the face is completely gone. So in other words, the hottest part of the fire was up higher. So they probably put the child on the ground then built the fire over the top of the individual is what I'm thinking. We can't compare this to anything because nobody's ever found anything like this, um, in, this in this part of the world at this time frame. So, you know, obviously we're no, we know we're dealing with something very old at the beginning. I mean, we, we weren't, we, weren't um, um, we, we had a lot of good information about the age at the very beginning. So that certainly made it, the, the magnitude of the, um, of the discovery was apparent to us at the at the initial uh, at the initial discovery. One of my coworkers, Josh Ruther, uh, uh, who's doing the geoarchaeology at the site, and myself, we both have children that are roughly you know the, the same age of uh, of the find, um, and so that was kind of eerie to think about. You know, it brought it home more more um, specifically that we're it's not just a, a human remain that we're, we're we're dealing with. We're dealing with a, a child, somebody's child. But we have actually thought of a name, and it's Haksa Shag Sanin. And that means this child, child of the river where the sun rises. It, it's just the position of the child and the, and the feature where, where it was. And, uh, and then that, that's based a little bit on what we know that that land was referred to by, by people that lived there before in the Salcha area. We honor the dead that are long ago dead in that we don't know them, but they, we may share uh, brotherhood with them. So. It's like a while ago I mentioned I have to make prayers it is to God our Creator that I didn't desecrate you know the remains just that you know because of the necessity of study and science and research that it became a must for us to do what we had to do and I have to seek forgiveness for that. <laughs>